today is part one of Kamado Joe 101. Let's get into it. What's up barbecue fans? Welcome back to the patio. My name's Jake, you're watching Rum and Cook. Today on the channel, we're kicking off Kamado Joe 101 and we're talking all about lighting your Kamado Joe and maintaining temperatures. We gotta start the basics. I'm doing a whole series here, but a lot of people make some very simple mistakes and they actually work against themselves and today we're gonna to fix that. Let's bring you in close and we will put some lump in our Joe and we'll talk about what we're looking for when we start it up. So as we open this guy up, we have a look inside. You can see how it was set up for my last cook. Just a straightforward indirect cook. Take our grates out of here. We'll take our diffuser plates out. Our star accessory. So right here, you can see how much lump we have. First thing we have to do is we've got to clean this out. We've got most of our ash knocked off there. Now you can reuse this, there's no problem there. What'll happen here is this doesn't quite burn as hot and it is a little bit more difficult to light, but we're gonna put some fresh lump on it so it's really not gonna matter. The thing here is that you don't fill the basket every time. If you're doing something like pizza, where you're gonna be 450, 500, all the way up to 900, and you're gonna need that temperature to go for a little while, right? You need to get it up to temperature, you need to preheat your pizza stone, and then depending on how many pizzas you're cooking, you need it to last for a while, right? In that case, you're probably gonna fill it up the basket. You might go three quarters of a basket if you're only doing one or two pizzas. If you're doing five or six or more, then you might wanna fill it all the way up. If you were doing, a low, slow smoke of some ribs is gonna take three or four hours, 225, 250, maybe a quarter basket. That's really all you need. If you were gonna do maybe a reverse sear, you might wanna go, like maybe it's a big old piece of meat that's gonna take an hour to reverse sear and then you wanna sear it. So then you're gonna go closer to probably a third of a basket towards half depending on how big that piece of meat is, but usually a third of a basket is probably gonna be just fine because you're gonna need time to reverse sear at 225, 250, and then you're gonna rest your steak and you're gonna bring it up to searing inferno mode, and you're gonna need some lump in there to keep that temperature up and get that good sear that you're looking for. Now, if you're doing a brisket, as long as it's not like an 18 or 20 pound brisket, you can probably get away with half to three quarters of a basket tops you're not gonna go through a full basket. There's no way. Figure out what you're cooking and start to learn. Your goal really is to finish off with just a little bit of lump. You saw how much lump was in there. Uh, that was from a, the turkey breast video I did last week actually. So I used a very little bit. We used a quarter in there. It cooked for three hours at 275. That gives you a good reference there, okay? First thing you wanna decide before you put your lump in is what you're gonna do with your smoking wood. So here I've got a big old piece of pecan, big chunk. General rule of thumb, five to 15% wood to lump ratio. Most people like to be around 10%. Uh, if you go too much, you can get too smoky. You can definitely over smoke things, right? But in general, you wanna put this at the bottom. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put this at the bottom. You're gonna push, push the lump around it, pour some fresh lump on top of it. And then what's gonna happen is this is gonna smolder. And as it does, it's gonna go through some hot lump and it's gonna double burn the smoke. So what happens there is you end up with some cleaner smoke, right? Now, real quick on clean versus dirty smoke. There's a lot of talk about dirty smoke out there. And if you were doing a cook and you wanted to add some more wood because you couldn't smell smoke anymore, then you can absolutely do that. You are gonna end up with some white smoke when it starts, but it's only gonna last five, 10 minutes, and then it's gonna to start to clean up, right? Lots of people, when they're new to smoke and they think you've gotta see smoke all the time, you need to smell it. Clean smoke is generally a thin blue smoke, but you can run too clean of smoke, right? I learned this the hard way when I started working on my offset for the first time, I was freaked out about clean versus dirty smoke and I ran way too clean of a fire and my barbecue sucked, <laughs> right? Uh, the flip side of that is if you run dirty smoke the entire time, it's gonna be acrid and bitter and everyone's gonna hate it. You may think it's okay because you cooked it, but everybody else is not gonna like it, trust me. So there is a happy balance there. Run with clean smoke for the most part, but if you start with some dirtier smoke or you throw in a piece mid-cook, it is not gonna hurt anything, trust me. 
right? So for today's cook, I'm not using any wood, so I don't need to put a piece of wood in there. We can fill up our lump. Now you can kind of spread out your lump to make sure it's organized here. A Kamado burns front to back. So generally, if you're gonna do a longer cook, you want a little bit more towards the back, or if you're doing rotisserie, you might wanna bank it. Um, I've got it fairly even because of the type of cook I'm gonna be doing today, and I want a nice even zone for my fat to drip into. Now we've gotta get this guy started up. So there are a couple options. We have the Grow Blazer Grow Gun which is the fastest way. You can get this lit 45 seconds to about a minute and a half, depending on what you're trying to cook. Or if you don't have that, you can use some Kamado Joe wax cubes. I used these for years before I had a grill gun. Most people are probably gonna start with something like these. So we're gonna talk about these a little bit today. They come in a big block. They're little tiny squares, you just break it up, right? But here's my general rule of thumb for these. If I'm going to do a cook 225, 250, I'm gonna use one of these. I'm gonna bur bury it right in the middle. I'm gonna light it up. And when you light these, these burn for about 15 minutes, right? So you don't wanna um, crowd it, but you can put some lump over top of it and it will keep burning. If I'm gonna do 250 to 350, I will usually use two of these, right? Again, get started a little quicker. It will still go if you use one, but it's gonna take a while, right? So if you use two, you can get it up to temperature a little quicker. If I'm gonna make pizza, and I'm gonna go 450, 500 and above, I'm gonna use three of these. And usually what I'll do is I'll make like a little triangle, right? And I'll spread it out so I get a big surface lit. Uh, what I wanna do there is I wanna make sure I have no cold spots and we're getting equal heat below our pizza stone. Even if you're doing a hot cook in general and maybe you want like a, I don't know, two zone cook, you could kind of lay them off to the side if you wanted to. Uh, but when I'm gonna go 450, 500, I'm just gonna use three because I wanna get it going as quick as possible. So today we're gonna use these since not everyone has a grill gun. If you're interested in a grill gun, they work great. I use it for my fire pit, I use it for my offset, use it for this guy, but I do have a 10% discount code below. Today, I'm gonna run at 275. So I'm just above that 250 and I wanna get started a little quicker. So we're gonna use two of these. I'm gonna try and get them in a little, little deeper. And then usually I'll kind of put some lump around it. All right, so we'll light one up. Once they're going, I'm gonna move some lump around there because I want my, my lump to get warmed up. I wanna give that flame, go like that, right? Now the flame can still go but I'm getting some lump stirred up. So now that these are going, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my bottom vent and we're gonna get some air in from below and then we're gonna let this burn for about 10 minutes and we'll come back and check on it. So it's been 10 minutes. As you can see, we've got our lump burning well. We've got a lot of white there. We're leaving it open to make sure that we can get this up to temperature as quickly as we can. But after about 10 minutes, we can start to assemble it. Now for today's cook, I'm not using the deflector plates, but if you wanted to use them, now would be your time to assemble them and put them together. You wanna to get them up to temperature and we wanna to start to get our Komodo Joe up to temperature so we can start getting it heat soaked. So for my cook today, I'm actually cooking directly over the lump. So I'm just putting in the racks. And again, if you're gonna use the heat deflectors, put everything in now and let's close it up. So now that we've got together, our bottom vent is all the way open still. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our top vent and we're gonna to start to let the air move through the Joe and bring it up the temperature. Now remember, if you're doing straight grilling, wings or something like that, dogs, sausages, burgers, you don't have to worry about heat soaking this. If you're doing anything more, you definitely wanna spend the time to heat soak it because that allows you to take full advantage of what a Kamado Joe is all about, right? This is gonna suck up all the heat. What happens, it fires all that heat through radiant energy back into your meat and you get 365 degree cooking. So once we get up to temperature, it still takes a little bit of time for our dome to get up to temperature, right? It's gonna feel like right now it feels cool. It'll start to get to the point where I can't hold my hands there 
for more than 10 or 15 seconds and that's how we know that our ceramic is up to temperature. So it's been about 15 minutes or so you can see we have passed our 300 target temp. No worries though we're going to shut this down. First we're going to close this down now we're going to bump this up to about our first line here okay. I'm going to bring this back below 300. We're going to close our bottom vent here about just down to about an inch at the bottom. Okay, now this brings us to one of our common mistakes that people make. They're trying to adjust too many different things. Now the way a Kamado Joe works is we have airflow in through the bottom and we have it out through the top. It kind of creates like a vacuum through there. The more air, the more hot, right? So what you want to do is you want to just control one thing. It makes it a lot easier. Lots of people what they do is they tweak the bottom vent and they tweak the top vent and they do the little hokey po pokey thing and they chase the temperature all about, right? So what you want to do is you want to have one inch on the bottom and do all your controls from up top, right? This is quite the range, right? If we're just a little bit open, we can run 225 all day long. We come up a little bit more, we go to 250, we come up a little bit more, we go to 275, come up a little bit more, 300, and if we go all the way, right, I can run close to 450 depending on how much lump I have in there and always use quality lump. I didn't mention that here, but I did recently do a video where I did the nine secrets that helped me master Kamado Joe. I'll link that up here, but I talk about lump in that video. But what we wanna do here is we're gonna just set this up and now we're going to allow our ceramics to keep warming up. It's pretty hot right now uh, but it's got a little ways to go and what we're going to do is we're going to let it settle in and then we'll talk about some final thoughts. So it's been about another 15 minutes or so. We are locked in. We're sitting right about 298 which is exactly where I want to be and now I can get cooking. If I feel this guy, this is hot. I can't, I can't keep my hands here. Uh, for more than half a second, it's warm, right? So we know our ceramics is nice and preheated. We've got that all heat soaked, so we're gonna get full advantage of that 360 degree cooking. Couple tips here. If you overshoot your temperatures in this initial stage, close down the top vent. Let it come back down, right? Just wait it out, it will come down. If you overshot it by say, I don't know, 100 degrees or something crazy, it's gonna take a little while to come down, right? So in that situation, what you wanna do is you wanna close both your vents, stop all your airflow, wait five minutes, burp this guy, let all that hot air out, close it, wait another 10 minutes, burp it again, close it. You're choking off your fire and you're also letting all that heat out. After you've burped it the second or third time and you've got down to your target temperature, maybe a little bit below, open up your bottom vent one inch again and then dial in your temperatures again. Now you've, got to, you've really got to learn your temperatures right. In the middle is about 325. Figure out where you want to be and go a little bit below your target temperature. We've got air flowing, so it's gonna come up a little bit and then it's gonna settle in and then you can get back to cooking, right? So don't worry about overshooting your temperatures. That's how you bring it back down. Another little tip is do not overcorrect. Get some patience, right? A little bit on this guy goes a long way. So, you know, if you're off by 10, 15 degrees, and you move it half an inch, you're gonna overshoot your temperature. Move it a little bit, wait five or six minutes, and then move it again. After about 10, 15 cooks, you're gonna have a good idea where your vent settings are, and you're gonna feel a lot more comfortable with it. But if you keep making adjustments every three minutes, you're gonna continuously ch uh, chase your temperatures, and it's really gonna frustrate the hell out of you. My last and final tip here is, if you're cooking at some hotter temperatures, maybe you're doing some pizza, maybe you're grilling or something like that, if you've got a lot of flame activity here, you need to kind of burp this, open it, let some air in there, and then open it, okay? If you open this right away, you're gonna, it's gonna, there's gonna be a whole bunch of oxygen get, comes in there and it's gonna flare up, right? You do not wanna do that, so open a little slower, just open up a little bit, 
allow some oxygen in there, and then you can open up all the way. That's the end of part one. Real quick before you go, if you like the video, subscribe. Give it a thumbs up while you're down there. And we're doing a contest. I'm at 22,000 subscribers or so. We're, approach we're approaching 25,000. I'm doing a big giveaway. Go to my website, rumcook.com. Scroll all the way down to the bottom, sign up for my newsletter, and we'll get you entered into our contest. I'll announce more about the 25K giveaway as we get a little closer, but get signed up for that. Thanks as always for watching. I will be doing a part two soon, so subscribe. I'll see you soon.